Yeah, I thought today our offense was on point, you know, to score 95 points on a day where the three-point shot really wasn't helping us out much. Um, you know, how did we do it? We took care of the ball, low turnover game. We got to the free throw line. Um, we had a special emphasis in this game um, for shot selection in the paint. Bryant was one of the best shot blocking teams in college basketball. I think they entered today's game like the fifth best shot blocking team in college basketball. And for where I was sitting, I don't think they got their hands on one block. So that was an emphasis in practice and give our players a lot of credit for executing the game plan. So we did a lot of really good things uh, offensively uh, tonight against a team that you know has an identity, changing defenses on us, picking us up a little bit. So I thought offense was one of our cleanest games. On the other end of the floor, you know, we're just a work in progress. I uh, wasn't pleased with the way we played defensively today. This team has two dominant scores, and we both we, we let both those guys get going. Um, we just got to continue focusing on uh, defense, and it's going to be a big part of our SEC journey. Speaking of not turning the ball over, I mean, that's something you haven't done all year. I mean, and that's with a lot of new guys, too. Uh, what's really been a, what allowed y'all to maybe cultivate that and get that, you know, as a strength for this team so early? And it starts in recruiting, and, uh, you know, we. Each system, each coach, each program, each organization tries to recruit to their to their ideals. And so one of the things um, of many is we um, we really think the game can be played um, in the best way possible if you take care of the ball. You know, I'm not a big fan of coming down and just handing the other team the ball. So certainly when you start thinking about NCAA tournament time when you're trying to win six games in three weekends, you can't always rely on shooting. Um, or, or this kind of execution. But what you can rely on is just a commitment to take care of the ball. And I think for the most part in our 13-game non-conference schedule, the guys have embraced that. Hasn't always been perfect, um, but I think there is an understanding in our program that we're trying to take care of the ball. Um, we're trying to have great assist to turnover ratios in our playmakers, um, and everybody that plays for Ole Miss has a responsibility, you know, not, not to give the ball to the other team. You're no stranger to winning right away at the places that you've been. What does it mean to you personally to tie the best start that this program has had ever? Yeah, I think when I think of those kinds of things, uh, just think of the players. Uh, the players deserve all the credit, you know, with Matt and Brake and TJ and Rob and those guys that chose to come back, you know, and trusted us in the coaching change and certainly the players we recruited, both high school and portal. Um, you know, I'll say this about records and things like, if we're going to do the things that we want to get done here and why we came to Oxford, there's going to be a lot of records uh, that need that need to be approached and broken um, over, over the years and over the next months and weeks. And so, um, you know, I, I think our non-conference schedule proved a lot. Uh, to me, it proved that we can play um, on the offensive end and defensive end. We're still striving for that consistency, but I don't think that's any different than any other team. Um, I don't think our schedule's gotten the respect uh, that it should. Um, you know, we're one of very few BCS teams that played two true road games. Uh, we played opponents from the Big 12, the ACC, the Pac-12. Um, we played NCAA tournament teams from last year. We played top 25 teams. Um, so I think the schedule challenges us in a lot of ways. And um, you know, I think for the most part, we've answered the call. So to have 13 wins going into SEC play uh, doesn't mean anything um, on Saturday when the ball goes up. But I think just to take a quick second and reflect, uh, a lot of work went into these wins um, in November and December, and so I think the players deserve all the credit. Congratulations on your mile seven undefeated uh, non-conference schedule. I want to ask you about uh, your time under Bobby Knight um, and kind of tampering the expectations and not getting ahead of yourself and taking one game at a time. What did you learn under Coach Sign? How are you using that now at Ole Miss and uh, your previous stops as well? Yeah, I learned a lot from Coach, obviously. It's like getting a Ph.D. in coaching every day and uh, was with him almost every day for multiple hours, you know, for eight years. Uh, and then after Coach retired, certainly continued a relationship. Uh, when I think of Coach, I also think of Pat Knight. Um, I have no better friend, mentor in basketball and in life than Pat. So, so many things from Coach. But one thing we did learn from Coach, um, including other coaches I've worked for, you know, is the biggest game is the next game on the schedule, period. Um, anybody that feels any different doesn't understand how to win at this level. So. The ability to just to approach each game um, like it's a season in itself is really important to us uh, from preparation to execution of game plans and just to be ready to play each night. Uh, and I think our guys did a, did a good job. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm going to say great job. I, I think we're, we're off to a good start. We're starting to embrace um, the idea that, you know, what we do is more important than the opponent. And I, I think, um, you know, we're in a good, we're a good spot right now. And 
Um, we'll kind of see SEC is obviously going to bring a whole other level of challenge. Um, but I, I think we have a chance to be competitive, and I don't think anybody would, would disagree with that. What, what are you most curious about that SEC play might teach you about this team? Uh, I don't – never been asked that, man. Curious word. When I think of curious, I think of curious George um, and the guy with the raincoat and the hat. Um, no, I mean, I'll say this. Like, when you enter conference play, um, you know, it's just – it's all about consistency. And um, – you dissect anybody's non-conference schedule in the SEC, and you'll find plenty of reasons to justify why this team can be a real factor. On the other side of the coin, every team has some things they're continuing to try to clean up. You know, we're no different. But I think as we continue to embrace defense, as we continue to embrace possession by possession basketball, uh, I do think we have a chance to be competitive um, in the SEC, and that was always one of our objectives this first year. Um, you know, I, I, I think uh, there's there's a way to win every game on the schedule uh, that's remaining. And uh, we'll do our best to put our players in a position to, to have, have a chance to do that. What's the early evaluation of Tennessee and just opening in Knoxville? Just what are your thoughts on that and uh, previewing that game away? Yeah, obviously, me personally, I haven't started preparing for that game. But I do know a lot uh, about Tennessee. Uh, Coach Barnes is a, a friend of mine. He's, he's a mentor of mine. Um, so I always follow his teams. This year's no different. Um, what we know about Tennessee is we know they have an identity, a culture. It's based on defense and rebounding. It's based on toughness, both physical and also mental. Um, Tennessee is one of those teams that's not going to beat themselves. Um, so when you get into a 40-minute game uh, against the Coach Barnes team, you're going to have to play well. And I know that's like Captain Obvious, but that's what it comes down to. We'll have X amount of possessions in the game. And we'll have to hold our own um, in many of those possessions. We'll have to win some of those possessions. And we got to make sure that we don't um, you know, get beat in a game of runs. Um, but nothing but respect for Coach and Tennessee. And it would be a great challenge for our team to open league play uh, playing in Knoxville. You mentioned Rob briefly a moment ago. Is there a timetable when we might see him back in action? Yeah, right now Rob is basically, I would say, kind of not day to day, but probably two to three days at a time, um, trying to get him some much needed rest right now. Um, and so this was important for us coming after Christmas just to give him some rest. He continues to, to work on his conditioning, so when his number's called, he'll be ready. Um, but we're evaluating that thing every two or three days with the medical staff. You've been a lot of different places and instilled both culture and system. How do you feel like this team stacks up with some of your other stops as far as first-year teams with culture and system? Yeah, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about uh, that. Um, but I'll say this about this year's team. You know, we're definitely still a work in progress. Um, but the buy-in to this point has been where it needs to be. Um, and it'll have to continue. You know, I've always thought college basketball, there's three seasons within the season. You have your non-conference schedule. You have your conference schedule. And then you have your postseason. And with each new season, you've got to get better. Um, and that's not just basketball. The mental side of it, um, your culture, your identity, the things that you believe in have to continue to strengthen um, in my opinion, nobody's kind of staying the same this time of year. You're either trending up and you're getting better um, or you're going the other way. And so I think with our team, um, lots of positives, but those are things to reflect on, you know, in, in April and May. Right now we're right in the middle of the storm, um, but I do think our non-conference schedule proved um, to ourselves, um, more important than anybody, um, that we have the talent in that locker room. Um, it's just a matter of continuing to – to, to push and get better and embrace each day. What are, I guess, your, your benchmarks with Brandon and I guess to a lesser extent Musa because he's been playing for a little bit longer, just to kind of getting them up to speed. Where, where, do, you see, where do you see them at right now, having come in mid-year? Yeah, first of all, I think it's very challenging uh, to, to enter a team um, after lack of playing in games after lack of playing in practice and Musa's play. So it starts by just understanding this isn't easy. You don't just go out there and everything clicks. So the first thing to me is the mental side. And both guys are executing that well. Uh, from, from where I'm sitting and my, my relationship with those guys, they're just embracing one thing, and that's how can I help the team um, and the opportunities that I get. So the mental side to both guys um, has been well, and I have a lot of respect for those guys. Basketball, it's still getting, getting your feet under you. I thought Musa played really well at times today, but you see the fatigue kicking in, and he's just got to continue to fight through that. And with Brandon, it just went so long without playing. It's just about getting the rust off. And I thought Brandon played 
um, really well against Southern Miss, continue that today. So it's no secret that we need both of those guys to be a big, big, big part of what we plan on doing here in January and February and March. Um, I think both guys have embraced a really difficult situation um, about the best you can. And so now it's just about with each, with each minute, with each opportunity, just continue to get back to who those two guys are, which in my opinion, you know, are two of the better players in college basketball. Appreciate you guys. Happy New Year.